LWO on WeatherNet. Uh, lift off conditions looking pretty good. The FTS is ready for launch. Ignition. Lift off. Falcon 9 has cleared the tower. Ten. Nine. Eight. Side booster ignition. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Good evening. It's Tuesday, November 23rd, and on your screen is a live view of Falcon 9 as it awaits its 10.21 p.m. Pacific Time launch from Space Launch Complex 4 East at Vandenberg Space Force Base. My name is Jesse Anderson. I'm a production and engineering manager on Falcon 9 here at SpaceX. Welcome to our webcast coverage for the Double Asteroid Redirection Test, or DART mission, managed by NASA's Launch Services Program. If you ever saw the movie Armageddon or played asteroids as a kid, this mission is for you. DART is SpaceX's first interplanetary launch for NASA and the first planetary defense test to see if humanity can change the motion of an asteroid in space or stop it altogether. Together. As part of NASA's larger planetary defense strategy, the DART mission will prove that a spacecraft can autonomously navigate to a target asteroid and intentionally collide with it, a method of asteroid deflection known as kinetic impact. The target asteroid, which poses no threat to Earth, is the asteroid moonlet Dimorphos, which orbits a larger asteroid named Didymos. If all goes as planned, DART will direct itself to impact Dimorphos at roughly 15,000 miles per hour or four miles per second, which is six kilometers per second, just under a year from now, somewhere between September 26 and October 1st of 2022. Scientists will use telescopic observations of the asteroids, images taken by an onboard camera, images of the DART impact event collected by an Italian space agency CubeSat, and data collected later by the European Space Agency's HERA mission to build a more accurate model and better prepare us to successfully defend the planet should a future asteroid impact threat ever be discovered. The DART mission is an awesome example of science fiction becoming reality, and the SpaceX team couldn't be more excited to be launching this payload to space. We will learn more about the DART mission later on in the broadcast, but first, let's take a closer look at the vehicle on your screen. Now, as many of you may know, on your screen is a live view of our Falcon 9 launch vehicle. Our, our, our two-stage liquid-fueled launch vehicle is in position at Space Launch Complex 4 East at Vandenberg Space Force Base. Today marks the 26th mission for SpaceX this year and 128th flight of a Falcon 9 vehicle overall. This is SpaceX's first flight proven launch for NASA's Launch Services Program. This first stage booster supported Sentinel-6A around the same time last November and took its second flight on a Starlink mission in May of this year. Now, if you're new to our webcast or unfamiliar with Falcon 9, what you see at the bottom two-thirds of the vehicle are SIP markings from its previous two flights. These markings are located on what we call the first stage or the booster, and the first stage's primary role is, a, is to accelerate the vehicle all the way to the edge of space with the help of nine Merlin engines. It will then drop off the second stage carrying today's payload, which is NASA's DART or Double Asteroid Redirection Test spacecraft. Now, following separation from the second stage, the first stage will make its way back to Earth for the third time, where we will then attempt to recover it on our autonomous drone ship, Of Course I Still Love You, and that is a live view of that drone ship right there on your screen. Now, if you turn your attention to the section above the first stage in the black carbon fiber inner stage, you'll see Falcon 9's second stage. About two and a half minutes into flight, the first and second stage will separate, and the second stage will ignite its single Merlin vacuum engine to carry the DART spacecraft to an interplanetary trajectory, as I mentioned earlier in the webcast. Separation from the second stage will occur, and then the spacecraft will perform burns as it begins its journey in space. Now, finally, above this stage, placed at the very top of the vehicle, you'll see the nose cone structure, and that is called a fairing. Inside of that structure is the DART spacecraft. The two fairing halves are safely encapsulating the spacecraft to protect it from aerodynamic heating, loads, and contamination during ascent. 
The fairing halves we are using today are brand new and we plan to recover them on our recovery ship NRC Quest. Now, once the vehicle reaches the vacuum of space, we will jettison the fairing halves as the second stage continues on its journey to orbit. Good evening from Hawthorne, California. I'm John Isbrucker, the Falcon Principal Integration Engineer. And the launch vehicle and spacecraft are in good health and ready for launch as we approach T minus 13 minutes, 30 seconds to liftoff. The Falcon 9 team reported on console at T minus two hours, 15 minutes. We received the final countdown briefing from the SpaceX launch director, and we began the final checks of the launch vehicle and the ground systems. Final check out of the flight termination system was performed at T minus one hour, 45 minutes. Now, most recently, we completed the poll to proceed with propellant load and launch. Propellant loading is ongoing. We started it on time at T minus 35 minutes. Now, Falcon 9 is a bi-propellant vehicle, meaning it uses two propellants, a fuel and an oxidizer. For Falcon 9, our fuel is a refined form of kerosene known as RP-1. Now, to burn the fuel, we need a source of oxygen, which we call the oxidizer. Most burning on Earth uses oxygen, which makes up about 21% of the air you breathe. However, in space, there is no atmosphere to provide oxygen or other oxygen-bearing molecules, so rockets need to carry their own. Falcon 9's oxidizer is super chilled liquid oxygen called densified LOX. The liquid oxygen is chilled well below its boiling point to increase its density, and that allows us to load more into the first and second stage LOX tanks. Now currently, fuel loading is complete on the second stage. We're continuing fuel loading on the first stage up until T minus six minutes. Liquid oxygen is loading on the first and second stages right now. Now, in addition to its propellants, Falcon 9 also needs an ignition source to start burning the fuel and oxidizer. And for that, we use the chemical T-tub, which stands for triethyl aluminum and triethyl borane. We ignite the engines by first flowing some liquid oxygen and T-tub into the gas generator and the main combustion chambers. The T-tub burns in the presence of oxygen. So once we get that ignition, then we can introduce the RP-1 kerosene fuel and the Merlin engine goes to full power for liftoff. Now at liftoff, Falcon 9's two stages combine to hold over 1.1 million pounds propellant. And we'll burn through most of that over the eight and a half minutes it takes to land the first stage and get the second stage into its initial orbit. Now once our Merlin engines begin to burn the RP-1 kerosene fuel and the liquid oxygen, you're gonna see the rocket essentially throwing the combustion exhaust out of the engine nozzles in one direction resulting in a push on the rocket in the opposite direction. And this is the great example of Newton's third law of motion. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Now we started the day with pretty good weather forecast and the good news right now is weather officers giving us a 0% probability of violating launch weather requirements. The ground level winds are good, the upper altitude winds are good. And we don't expect to have any weather holds for launch. The weather conditions also look good for booster landing on our drone ship and for fairing recovery in the Pacific Ocean. So with that, the launch vehicle, the spacecraft, the weather, and the range are all good to go for a 10.21 p.m. Pacific time liftoff from Space Launch Complex 4 East. Liftoff of Falcon 9 will kick off a roughly 11-month journey for the DART payload. The DART spacecraft will separate right around 56 minutes into flight, and from there, it will spend the next 11 months cruising to its intended destination, intercepting the binary asteroid system between late September and early October of 2022. DART's target asteroid is the size of two football fields. Impact will occur when the distance between Earth and the asteroids is near its minimum, within 6.8 million miles or 11 million kilometers of Earth. This will enable scientists to observe and measure the change in momentum of the Dimorphos asteroid. And it's worth noting that Dimorphos is not a threat to Earth. Therefore, it's a perfect testing ground to see if intentionally crashing a spacecraft into an asteroid is an effective way to change its course should an Earth-threatening asteroid be discovered in the future. Now, the DART demonstration has been carefully designed with four key objectives. The first objective is to demonstrate a kinetic impact with Dimorphos, the smaller the two asteroids. DART will hit the asteroid nearly head-on 
delivering enough energy to leave an impact crater, but not enough to destroy the asteroid, eject it from its orbit around that larger asteroid, or noticeably change the pair's orbit about the sun. Now the second objective is to change the binary orbital period of Dimorphos. Now the orbital period is the time it takes the smaller asteroid to circle the larger asteroid you can see here in the graphic. Currently, Dimorphos is in that original orbit. Scientists estimate the collision will shorten the smaller asteroid's orbital period by several minutes, placing it into that new blue orbit. Now the third objective is to use ground-based telescope observations to measure the orbital period change before and after the impact. Telescopic observations in the weeks after impact will confirm that DART changed that orbital period of Dimorphos and it'll reveal by how much. And then finally, the fourth objective is to measure the effects of the impact and the efficiency of that deflection. Now choosing this binary asteroid target for the demonstration takes advantage of the fact that changes in that smaller asteroid's orbit around its larger partner can be more easily measured than the changes in a single asteroid's orbit around the sun. To ensure the best possible data capture, the DART mission is taking along some pretty cool technologies to help capture this demonstration test. On board the spacecraft is the Didymos Re Reconnaissance and Asteroid Camera for Optical Navigation, also known as DRACO. Now, this is not to be confused with the DRACO thrusters on SpaceX's Dragon spacecraft. DART's DRACO will provide real-time streaming images of, asteroid, of the asteroid as it approaches impact. In addition to the onboard camera, the team is also flying a CubeSat from the Italian space agency known as Licia Cube, which stands for Light Italian CubeSat for Imaging of Asteroids. This cube will be deployed from the DART spacecraft 10 days prior to impact with, with the asteroid. Licia Cube will use its onboard propulsion system to alter its trajectory, offsetting so that it flies past Dimorphos approximately three minutes after the DART impact to capture the effects of the impact. Now, it's pretty incredible to think about what a mission like this could mean for the future of planetary defense. Now let's take a closer look at what the NASA team is hoping to achieve with the double asteroid redirection test mission. In case there was an asteroid coming towards Earth and you're there, you can actually stop it. I mean, that's kind of fantastic. NASA is crashing a spacecraft into an asteroid. What? You think science fiction, but this is real. Never in my life would I have thought I would take a couple hundred million dollar spacecraft and crash it into an asteroid. <laughs> My name is Michelle Chen. I'm Lena Adams. My name is Kelly Fast. I'm Andy Rifkin. I'm Justina Sorovitz, and I help tell the story of the DART mission. I'm a planetary defender. And I study how the orbits of asteroids change after we hit them with spacecraft. My job was primarily to make sure all the systems on the spacecraft work together. The DART mission is NASA's first test of a planetary defense technique called kinetic impactor. DART is the double asteroid redirection test. It's just a spacecraft that is going to go and smack an asteroid. The moon lift Dimorphos, which orbits the asteroid Didymos. And see if we can change its trajectory just a little bit. In order to show that we can deflect incoming asteroids if we need to. DART will only be changing the period of the orbit of Dimorphos by a, a tiny amount. But in space, just a little bit is just enough to make an asteroid actually miss us. In the event that an asteroid is discovered well ahead of time before it might impact Earth. Behind me, you see the spacecraft. It's really cool to see it coming together in real life. It is fantastic to see it in real life. To see it turn from ideas into real pieces that are gonna go into space. The solar arrays will actually roll out to 28 feet in length. Once the solar arrays are deployed, it's going to be the size of a school bus. As the solar array opens out, it's going to swing out in this direction. The asteroid's only two football fields in size. We're flying at over six kilometers a second. 30 days out, we see one pixel on our field of view. You can see Didymos and Dimorphos is one point of light. About four hours out, our spacecraft becomes autonomous. And then that's where everything gets really exciting. You actually are seeing impact. We're super excited and nervous as well. I feel really honored and humbled to be working in an area of science that has such a broader impact, you know, figuratively and literally. <laughs> The dinosaurs are made completely extinct by an asteroid impact so many years ago. Here we are, we can actually do something about it. I think this is just wonderful.
It's currently T minus four minutes and counting. Everything continues to be go for launch. Spacecraft is transferred to internal power. On your screen, you can see the large structure next to Falcon 9. That's a strong back. Currently, the clamp arms have opened up, and you can see that the strong back has begun to retract away from the rocket. It's moving all the way back to a launch position about 77 degrees upright. Now, this is different from Falcon East Coast launches, where we move the strong back only two degrees, and then we retract it the rest of the way at liftoff. It's slick four, once we get it back into position here in about another 40 seconds or so, we won't have to move it farther away at liftoff. Also, while we are watching the video, we have completed the fuel load on the first stage on time as expected, and we've begun chilling of the Merlin engines. Coming up on T minus three minutes, everything continues to be go. Stage one locks load complete. And we just heard that call out, locks load complete. That is the first stage locks loading being completed. Second stage will complete around T minus two minutes. And Falcon 9 and Dart teams continue to track no issues for launch. Weather is still looking great, as John mentioned. The range is ready to support. And SpaceX team is monitoring the completion of that second stage uh, coming up next around T minus two minutes. We should hear locks loading completing for that stage. Now, as a reminder, we do have, if we do uh, have a hold on today's launch for any reason, we do have a backup opportunity tomorrow with a liftoff time of 10.20 p.m. Pacific time, just a minute earlier than tonight. Coming up on T-minus two minutes, waiting for the call out that locks load is in closeout. Stage two locks load complete. There we go, stage two locks load is complete. This completes loading of the over 1.1 million pounds propellants on the Falcon 9. All systems remain go for launch. Now the SpaceX ground computer is now draining propellant out of the lines that go up the strong back to the second stage. And that creates the white cloud that you see around the strong back. Pressure from the ultra cold liquid oxygen line is being vented and that causes moisture in the California night air to condense. Next event will be the startup call out at T minus one minute. The first, second stage computers on Falcon 9 will execute programs to prepare the rocket for flight, leading to ignition of the Merlin engines at T minus two seconds and liftoff at T zero. Falcon 9's in startup. There's that call out. Falcon 9 computers are now running the final sequence for launch. First and second stage tanks are beginning to final pressurize for launch. Just waiting Falcon for the 9, dart, go for launch. And there's that final go for launch with all systems for go for T0. Let's listen into the terminal count and watch Falcon 9 transport NASA's dart spacecraft into orbit. T-minus 15. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Ignition. Falcon 9 with the DART mission on the way for humanity's first ever planetary defense test mission. Vehicle is pitching downrange. Stage one chamber pressure is nominal. T plus 33 seconds, SpaceX launch engineers seeing a nominal conditions on Falcon 9 as we begin the trip to space carrying the DART spacecraft. M1D engines about to begin throttling down. Power and telemetry nominal. We're throttled down. Avionics calls out good power on the vehicle. Vehicle supersonic.
Max Q. We've gone supersonic. We're through the period of maximum dynamic pressure. And the Maryland 1D engines have throttled back up to full power. We're out of the throttle bucket. From here on, even though the velocity is, even though the velocity is rapidly increasing, the atmospheric density is decreasing, and so the loads are decreasing now on the Falcon 9. Everything continues to look good with the stage one trajectory. In that kill has started. Lead valve is open on the second stage engine. That's beginning the final chill prior to second stage engine ignition. Two minutes into flight, all continues to go well. In 30 seconds, we'll have three significant events coming up in quick succession. We'll get Miko main engine cutoff where we shut down the nine Merlin engines. The stages will separate and we'll get ignition of the MVAC-D second stage engine to power DART and the second stage into their parking orbit. We've throttled down to hold at four Gs, getting ready for Miko. Miko. Stage separation confirmed. In the ignition. We've got successful stage separation. Second stage engine ignition now at full power on the Merlin engine. Next event coming up is going to be payload fairing jettison. On the left side, you can see the titanium grid fins on the first stage beginning to deploy as we get ready to bring the first stage back down to the drone ship. Of course, I still love you in the Pacific Ocean. Getting ready now, there's fairing the view separation confirmed. of the fairing. And we've got deployment of the payload fairing, and now the DART spacecraft exposed to the vacuum of outer space. Now we will be attempting to retrieve these new fairing halves with the help of our recovery vessel, NRC Quest. Stage two on nominal trajectory. Everything going well with Falcon 9 and DART. What you're looking at on your screen is a live view of that NVAC engine on our second stage. Burning bright, we are currently in the first of two planned MVAC burns for spacecraft deployment today. At T plus six minutes and 40 seconds, uh, you should see on your screen, hopefully we'll get some live views of the first stage uh, entry burn. And that entry burn will last about 30 seconds. Now for the entry burn, we do relight the center E9 engine and then partway through we relight the E1 and E5 engines so that we have three total M1D engines helping to slow the vehicle down as it passes back into the Earth's atmosphere. And again, what you're looking at on your screen is the MVAC engine on the second stage, we're getting some awesome live views and everything is still looking nominal for stage two. At T plus five minutes into this mission, we're just under two minutes away from the entry burn on the first stage as second stage is continuing on its journey. Again, this is the first of two planned MVAC burns for this mission. Now the Falcon 9 booster supporting today's mission will perform this entry burn for the third time because it's previously supported Starlink mission earlier this year and the stage two on nominal trajectory. Just to call out that stage two is looking nominal, which is great news. Uh, the first stage booster, again, supported a Starlink mission earlier this year and the Sentinel-6A mission in November of 2020. Now, both fairing halves for this mission are brand new and will be recovered for the first time on a recovery vessel, NRC Quest. And 
We are just about 30 seconds away from that entry burn on first stage. As a reminder, the Merlin engines on the first stage are optimized for sea level, and these do achieve 190,000 pounds of thrust during ascent and descent. And it looks like we've got a live view on your left-hand screen of the first stage. Stage one, FTS is saved. Stage one, entry burn startup. And we heard the call out as well as visual confirmation that the entry burn has begun on the first stage. Again, this is about a 30 second burn and just helps to slow the vehicle down as it's re-entering the denser part of the Earth's atmosphere. Stage one, entry burn shut down. And as you could see, the engine shut down on your screen. We did hear a call out that entry burn is complete. Stage two, FTS is saved. Stage two continues on a nominal trajectory. Now coming up in just, just a little over a minute will be Seco one. That is second stage engine cutoff one. Again, there is two burns for the MVAC engine on the second stage, so we are in the first burn. Expected loss of signal, Cook. So we should see this engine shut off here shortly. And about 20 seconds later, we'll see or hear the landing burn call out on first stage begin. MVAC shut down. And we just Nominal had... Nominal orbit insertion. That's what we were waiting for. Stage one, landing burn startup. So we got Seco one on second stage. We got a confirmation of good orbit and the landing burn has begun on first stage. And now we have a live view of first stage making its way to, of course, I still love you. Stage one, landing leg deploy. And we had some incredible views. Now we're just waiting for some confirmation of that first stage landing here in a second. As we have a live view of second stage currently with the engine cut off as it's coasting towards its targeted uh, orbit. And we will wait for that confirmation of that first stage landing, but uh, you have just witnessed Falcon 9's 26th uh, flight for this year. Um, and we will confirm once we have uh, that confirmation for that first stage landing. So now at this time, our mission isn't over just yet. The second stage is now embarking on its first coast phase. Coasting in this orbit will last about 20 minutes and we will light that MVAC engine for a second time shortly after T plus 28 minutes and 38 seconds. So we'll see you back here at T plus 28 minutes. Loss of signal van. Next station to acquire is Punta Arenas in 25 minutes.
stage one landing is confirmed.
unexpected acquisition of signal at Punta Arenas in one minute. of signal going to arena. Get back engine chill in progress. Welcome back to the webcast of the Falcon 9 mission carrying the DART spacecraft for NASA. And coming back with some great news, as you can see on your screen, that we didn't get a live view of touchdown. We do confirm a successful stage one landing today. That is the third for this booster, the 25th landing for SpaceX this year, and SpaceX's 88th overall successful recovery of a first stage. The second stage completed its first burn, placing the Falcon 9 and the DART spacecraft in the desired orbit. And right now we are approaching the second engine burn, uh, the, the burn of the second engine to carry Falcon 9. In recognition. And there's that SES-2, as you can see live on your screen, lighting up there. Now this burn is planned to last a little less than one minute. And during that time, we will add about three and a half kilometers per second to our velocity. Now you can see the gauge on the screen showing stage two quickly gaining speed. We'll add about three and a half kilometers per second or about 12,500 kilometers per hour to our velocity. Again, this burn is the second burn for this mission. And cutoff should be coming up here shortly. Okay. 
Invex shutdown. We heard that call out that MVAC has shut down. Now just waiting for confirmation of good Nominal orbit. Nominal escape burn. And there is that confirmation of a nominal escape burn. Jesse called out nominal escape burn. What that means, the Falcon 9 second stage with DART still attached has escaped Earth's velocity. It's now in what's called a heliocentric orbit. It's circling the sun in an orbit that takes it from just inside the Earth's orbit to just outside, where in 10 months, the DART spacecraft and those two asteroids should arrive at the same time. Now, the DART spacecraft is still attached to Falcon 9's second stage, so we've got one more major activity remaining in the launch mission, and that is spacecraft deployment. It's time to occur at about T plus 55 minutes and 42 seconds. So we're going to take another short break and we'll see you back here at T plus 55 minutes for the DART spacecraft deployment.
expected loss of signal, Punta Arenas. Our next collection will be in five minutes. Acquisition of signal, HPK.
acquisition of Signal, Diego Garcia. Position of signal HBK 26 meter.
Acquisition of signal, Melindy. Of signal Welcome back to our launch coverage of the DART mission for NASA. If you're just joining us, we had an on-time launch at 10.21 p.m. Pacific time, followed by successful ascent stage separation. First stage landing took a little bit, but we got the pictures. And it's two second stage engine burns that have put DART on an escape trajectory from Earth. There's one more major milestone coming up to complete today's mission, and that is deployment of the DART spacecraft from the Falcon 9 second stage due to happen in about 10 seconds from now. The view you see from the second stage camera is the DART spacecraft. We're gonna listen to hear the call out and watch for DART separation. DART separation confirmed. And to those watching, you're witnessing a successful deployment of the DART spacecraft. The impact of the DART spacecraft with the small asteroid Dimorphos is scheduled to happen sometime between the end of September 
and early October in 2022 when the double asteroid are closest to the Earth. Now during impact, the spacecraft will be traveling roughly 15,000 miles per hour or four miles per second. This is gonna be an exciting collision to witness and we wish everyone at NASA the best of luck with the rest of the mission. Those are some incredible views there. Now, one quick clarification. This is actually the 95th recovery of a Falcon first stage, which is the 88th for a Falcon 9. And with successful payload deploy, that brings our webcast to a close. For continuing coverage of the NASA mission, head on over to nasa.gov slash live or check them out on their social channels. Thank you to NASA for entrusting us with the DART mission as well as the range for their support. And of course, thank you to all of our viewers. We hope that you enjoyed the webcast this evening and we'll see you again soon.